Our organs like our brain, heart, muscles, liver, kidneys are all made up of cells and each one of those cells contain hundreds to thousands of mitochondria. This varying amount is based on the type of tissue and the demand that is being placed upon it. For the purposes of this short video and to simplify things, I'm going to focus on the most well-known process and role of the mitochondria, which is to produce our cellular energy called ATP. Now take a moment and think about a car. A car's engine runs as a result of having and utilizing gas in the tank. And as the gas is being utilized, it creates a byproduct, the exhaust. Well, our mitochondria function similarly in that they take electrons, the gas, and use them to produce ATP or energy, the motor running, and produce a byproduct of reactive oxygen species, the exhaust. When this process becomes dysfunctional or inefficient, it can lead to some of the most common symptoms people experience, like fatigue, muscle weakness, pain, poor healing, decreased ability to focus, concentrate, and remember, and contribute to the development of autoimmunity, cancer, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, neurological disorders like dementia and Alzheimer's. So you can see that mitochondria are an important piece to the health puzzle. And this process becomes dysfunctional when the mitochondria become inefficient at creating energy, which can occur when they leak electrons like a small hole in the tank of your car, leaking fuel, resulting in dangerous fumes, and if the mitochondria produce more exhaust or reactive oxygen species. So when there is excessive exhaust or leakage, it results in cellular damage, which disrupts metabolism and can result in the speeding up of cellular aging. These inefficient mitochondria are a downstream result of an upstream cause. So if we want to reach that next level in health and promote longevity, we want the mitochondria to be functioning optimally. So the next questions you should be asking yourself are, what are the goals of this treatment? What causes the mitochondria to become impaired in the first place? What do I need to do to avoid or remove from my environment to help the mitochondria? And more importantly, how do I repair, promote, enhance their efficiency and function. So I want to take a couple of minutes and just give you the comprehensive overview. And in future videos, we will dive deeper down the mitochondria rabbit hole. So what are the goals of treatment? Well, the goal is to remove the causes that create mitochondrial dysfunction, provide an environment in which the damaged mitochondria commit mitophagy, or basically suicide, repair the mitochondria that are worth saving, and then promote the growth of new mitochondria, called biogenesis, and make this process of producing energy more efficient. So how do we accomplish this? We figure out what in our environment causes the mitochondria to become impaired, like nutrient deficiencies, for example, B1, B2, B3, CoQ10, infrared light, iron, copper, and more. Excess carbohydrate consumption, particularly fructose, toxicants like pesticides and herbicides, medications like statins, persistent organic pollutants, and more. Microbial infections, like viral infections, similar like hepatitis or Epstein-Barr, or bacterial byproducts like endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides. Genetics can play a factor too, like SOD2 or PPAR gamma. The latter one, PPAR gamma, is attributed to decreased genetic ability to create the new mitochondria, that biogenesis I mentioned earlier. Or electromagnetic frequencies which kick off electrons and can make the mitochondria more leaky. Lack of sunlight, therefore lack of infrared light. So now that you have that comprehensive list, it's time to understand what can we do to actually enhance our mitochondria function and promote their ability to create energy more efficiently. So we want to look at supplementing with nutrients needed for function, like CoQ10 or nicotinamide riboside, or vitamins B1 through 3, iron, copper, acetyl L-carnine, or pyroloquinolone quinone, PQQ, to name a few. That last one actually helps with mitochondrial biogenesis. Choose foods that are organic to avoid those pesticides and herbicides. Increase healthy fats like DHA and cut out processed foods or ingredients like fructose. Implement intermittent fasting, which allows the body to kind of take a break and clean up all the damaged cell and mitochondria. Expose your body and your eyes to the sun's full spectrum of light and utilize infrared light therapies. 
implement cold thermogenesis to enhance mitochondrial efficiency. And if you have genetic SNPs, as I see in some of my clients, address them by consuming specific nutrients or herbs to offset their effects. Like with SOD2, which I see often in people who are chemically sensitive, this SNP can basically create more exhaust and therefore you may need to become more aware of addressing oxidation. See, these mitochondria act as the batteries to our metabolic functions and truly are one of the most important areas to understand and address to regain health or to achieve Olympic-like function. Thank you very much for taking this time to watch this short video and if you would like to be alerted and continue to learn more when this information becomes available, click subscribe and if you believe this information would be beneficial to your friends or your loved ones, please feel free to share it on Facebook or other platforms. This is Dr. Rudy Mueller reminding you to live happy, live healthily, and affect others positively. Thank you.